Okay? You guys like that thought, don't you? Okay? Now, lead is toxic. Okay? Lead is toxic. And lead will bind onto proteins and cause problems. Cells have genes that they can make that will cause them to make a, a protective protein when they discover there's a problem. So what I'm trying to paint the picture for you here is not only do cells have to do things on a regular basis, maintaining how much enzymes for glycolysis or for, for breaking down glucose, how much for replicating DNA, they have to be responding to situations that aren't always present. So one strategy would be to have the cell constantly making proteins that would, would bind to lead. That would be a very inefficient use of energy because most of the time those proteins wouldn't be doing anything. So it's important for the cell to recognize that there's lead, and when there's lead, start making that protein. The genes have to have enough flexibility built into them that they can be turned on and off as the needs of the cell change. Okay? Now I'm gonna give you an example in a second about how they accomplish that, but I want you to have this notion in your head that cells have to be able to respond to their environment. They absolutely have to be able to do that. A cell that can respond to its environment is going to survive the kid eating the leaded paint chips. A cell that can't respond to that is going to die. Make sense? All right, so how do we do that? Well, let's think about this. So the, the sequences here can't play that whole role because I'm talking about a situation where I've got a gene that's off some of the time and it's on another part of the time. So how do I control on and off sequences, okay? One of the ways in which I can control that is through the use of something called a sigma factor, okay? A sigma factor. The sigma factor is actually shown right here, and it is a protein that is a uh, protein that will bind to the RNA polymerase. The sigma factor actually determines which sequence that the RNA polymerase wants to bind to. So far, all we've talked about is a primno box. There are some genes that don't have a primno box. Under the normal course of events, since there's no primno box, the RNA polymerase ignores them. Okay? Because the sigma factor that's on that RNA polymerase is only recognizing the primno box. Let's imagine now I'm the kid eating the paint chips and the E. coli bacterium says, whoa, there's lead here. The first thing that the, the, the bacterium does is it starts synthesizing a different sigma factor. So it'll make a sigma factor that will now recognize a different promoter sequence and start transcription of those different genes. That's pretty cool. So in this way, genes can be activated when they need to be activated. And later, when the, the threat is taken away, they stop being made. And how would they stop being made? By the fact the cell will stop making the sigma factor. So sigma factors are giving the RNA polymerase the ability to bind to different promoters. So a different sigma factor will bind to a different promoter. And it's a very simple scheme that bacteria have where they can control which promoter is being bound by which sigma factor they are making at any given time. Question? Uh, it seems kind of like a circular. It is a little circular. It is. Go ahead. How does it, how does it synthesize? How does it know to synthesize that? That gets much more complicated, OK? Uh, but suffice it to say, it does. So one of the ways, I'll answer your question for you, but you won't need to know this, OK? One of the ways in which genes are, are, are controlled are through what's called negative controls. So that you have a protein that's being made routinely, and it's binding to the promoter, and it's stopping the RNA polymerase from being made. If that, promote, if that negative binding protein has a binding site for lead, it binds lead instead of binding DNA and comes off, now the RNA polymerase can make that, that sigma factor. That's one way. Make sense? Okay, so it is complicated. We don't need to worry about the complication. Suffice it to say that different sigma factors allow the RNA polymerase to bind to different promoters and therefore allow the cell 
to respond to its environment accordingly. That's pretty cool. Okay, now let's look at what happens during transcription. Okay? During transcription, RNA polymerase binds at the, 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 in this case, the pribnol box, it opens the strands up, and it starts copying one of the strands. Since polymerization can only occur 5 prime to 3 prime, it must be copying a strand in the 3 prime to 5 prime direction. Anti-parallel, right? Just like DNA polymerase is doing the same thing. The strand that it's copying has a name. Okay? It's called the template strand. So the strand that's being copied, in this case it's the bottom strand, is being copied. That's called the template strand. The strand that's not being copied is called the coding strand. Any idea why we call the strand that's not being copied the coding strand? Matt? Because it matches the RNA. It matches the RNA, except it has T instead of U. And you're making a coded thing, so it's called the coding strand. It has the same sequence as the RNA that's being made, except it has T instead of U. So the strand that's being copied is called the template strand. A template is something that you're copying. The strand that's not being copied is called the coding strand. OK. Once polymerization gets started, the sigma factor leaves. It's, it's, it's no longer of any use to the RNA polymerase. And the RNA polymerase goes along its merry way, making RNA in the absence of the sigma factor. OK. Any last questions? Everybody ready to call it a day? A lot of information. Okay. See you guys tomorrow. Yes, sir. Really quick. Okay. All right. You know how you talk about uh, how it uh, picks the right uh, gene to start coding for? Uh huh. And, uh, well, all right. So let's say you need a lot of glucose in one of your cells. Yep. Now, how do you, uh, like, would, it, would that one have just the, the closer into the perfect? Um, box. Um, in eukaryotes, in our cells, it's way more complicated than it is in bacterial cells. Okay. It's very complicated because there's multiple proteins that help the RNA polymerase to, to, to bind. Okay. So if we look, for example, in a liver cell uh, and compare it to, say, a muscle cell, liver cells have very different glucose needs and uses than muscle cells do, uh -huh. and so they have a very different collection of proteins that are involved in controlling those genes. Okay. Oh, all right, so different cells would have different ones that were more specific. Exactly. Okay. All right. And all that's right. how tissues work differently. I got you. All yeah. Right. All right. Thanks. Hi. I have two questions. One, yeah. Um, are the sigma factors also called transcription factors? Uh, no, they're not. But a transcription factor... Is it different than sigma factors? It is. Okay. Uh, but they have similar functions. But technically, we don't use those terms interchangeably. Okay. Yep. Okay. Good and question. My question on this one is, uh -huh. why don't they get full 16 points for that? Um, the TA, uh, I, I, what I'm telling students to do is if you uh, feel like you were entitled to more points, write me an explanation for why you think that's the case, and then um, staple it to your exam and hand it in, and I'll take a look at it. Wait, is there an uh, answer exam for students? Yes, it's outside my office. Oh, it's outside your office? Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to turn this in earlier. Can you bring it to me? I'm afra always afraid I'll lose them because oh, I'm carrying okay. stuff back. Okay. E either leave it in my office, or if I'm not there, leave it with the secretary in the main office and show it to you. Okay. Show, okay. Show so there's a coding strand and a leading, uh, leading strand, is that it? Not sure. So, because the, I forget which one it is, the template strand matches, or the template strand matches, the coding strand matches the RNA, except it has... Oh, you're saying to distinguish it.